All right. This video is mainly to help out flat earthers and other people that have a difficulty grasping some of the concepts of gravity and to for me to basically agree with the flat earth axiom that gravity doesn't exist as its own standalone force and to um, show you why so <clears throat> It helps you to understand and visualize gravity and the effects thereof when you see it more as an equilibrium force rather than an attraction force. Um, so try to think about gravity in the same way you think about air and water pressure. With water pressure, your higher volume of water rushes into the area, rushes into the areas of your lower volume of water. Same thing with air pressure. Your, your, your higher pressure of air rushes in to the lower pressure pockets of air. So the, the more rushes in to fill up, the less to equalize the forces, to equalize the pressure between the two areas. And this, I think, is what's going on with gravity, or at least it's the way that you need to visualize it in order to understand, in order to be able to fully visualize how gravity works in three dimensions. Now to conceptualize gravity in these terms, you have to think of, you have to think in terms of density or the presence of mass being an absence of space-time. You have to look at that absence of space-time as a low pressure area space-time. So everywhere there's mass, has, it has pushed space-time aside, creating, the in the area where that mass is sitting, creating a low-density area of space-time, for which the higher-density er, areas of space-time, i.e. vacuous space, can press into, push into the lower density areas of space-time in order to equalize the pressure, exactly the same as the way we visualize water pressure and air pressure. So to, to understand how this, um, you, you can immediately see how density affects this then. Because matter, now when I say matter, matter is like, like an atomic structure is 99 point something percent space. I'm not talking about that space. I'm talking about the little bits of particles that orbit each other to make the larger particles. I'm talking about just the mass of those little tiny bits of particles. Now, the more dense something is, the more dense something is, effectively the less air space it has the less space it has between those particles. So denser matter can be considered more mass, more matter, and less space time. Therefore, the denser something is, the less space time, the less space time is present within the confines of the particle that it creates. So denser matter Denser matter is more matter and less space. More matter pushes aside more space. So the, the denser something is, the more matter it consists of, the more space at time it press, presses aside, and the more empty space time wants to push in to fill that vacuous area of space time. You, you can then immediately see um, how gravity I'm going to say, for lack of a better word, I'm going to say pushes on a round object like a planet from all directions. So the planetary, the, the gravitational center of that planet becomes the very core on the inside. And uh, I think this is where flat earthers tend to make their mistake. 
is they, they tend to think in terms of gravity being down or, or gravity being uh, falling towards a flat surface or you have to realize that no matter what part of the circle you're on, down is always towards the core of the planet. Down isn't down. Um, when, when a flat earther shows you a planet here and they say, well, if gravity always takes things down, what would run off the planet down here? What, what they're doing is basically imposing uh, a super uh, a super terrestrial gravitational flaw down here. They're, they're effectively saying the universe has a flaw and the universe is one side up and they're imposing that flaw as a universal source of gravity to pull everything down one way. So flat earthers that say there's no gravity, if there's no gravity, where does your water run off the planet to? They're, they're still inciting a source of gravity, they're just not realizing that that's what's going on in their analogy. So back to reality. Your gravitational center is always, the gravitational focal point is always the dead center of that object. In the case of a sphere, it's right in the center at its core. So everywhere around it, towards the core, is down. So from the standpoint of that spherical object, that gravitational focal point can basically be considered a point of condensation where, where all things, all matter, again, uh, the, 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 the very small percentage of particles that is an empty space, the matter that pushes aside the empty space, all matter gets, gets all matter condenses toward that focal point. In that condensation process, the heavier items looking at the surface of a planet with an ocean, ocean atmosphere, your heavier items being liquid get pulled to the bottom first. You'll, and the heavier particles move around and through the lighter particles to sit on the bottom. And that's why the lighter particles like air sit on the top. Not because lighter things go up but because heavier things go down and work around the lighter particles to force the lighter particles to sit on top of the heavier particles. And there you have what's known as buoyancy. So flat earthers who say there's no such thing as gravity, it's all density and buoyancy, I'll just explain how the density of matter creates or incites the force of gravity from space-time to be directly correlative to the level of density in order to then create buoyancy. Now let's see if I've missed anything. My example, my, my prop. All right, I was going to buy a piece of rubber for this, but I saw this and it seemed like a better idea because it showed it shows some strata. <coughs> now, what I've done, I cut a slit in here, so you have to ignore the Joker face in it. I'm just imagine it without the splits. But I've stuffed a big piece of chalk in here to show you what happens when the matter pushes aside the surrounding space time. Now. What you can see here is there's very little effect out here. And th this is what you could regard as the space-time fabric warpage around a gravitational object. This is effectively the matter pushing aside the empty space, just as wedging the chalk in there forces aside the foam. So what you've got here is you can clearly see that the layers right directly next to the chalk are the layers that are squished the most and the effect gets less and less and less as you get further out. So what we've got here is an acceleration of gravity towards the object because space-time has more force applied to it closer to the object. And 
this explains why there is more gravitational attraction closer to an object than further away from an object because space time effectively is pushing harder on that to equalize the missing space time in that area. Space time is the surrounding space time is pushing its hardest closer to the object and isn't pushing as hard from out here. It, th that way of viewing things effectively renders the entire universe to be a positive pressure environment. Now, you could look at that as, you could look at that in the sense of it being like a fish tank filled with water with zero air in there. That that's just glass walls filled with water. That's a positive pressure environment. If you could just beam something into the middle of that water, the water pressure would be pushing on it from all sides. So you've got a positive pressure environment there, which is induced by finite walls. So when you introduce a new particle, a new object into that environment, pushes aside the water, the water pushes it pushes the water against the walls, the water has nowhere to go, so it creates a positive pressure environment where it pushes back on the object. The same, believe it or not, the same, so at, at, at a tertiary glance, at, at a first glance with that statement, you could say, well, you're implying that the universe is finite. No, believe it or not, exactly the same positive pressure environment ideal can be true for an infinite universe because if you when you're introducing matter to that to, to an environment with no walls it's pressing against the environment the environment's got everywhere to go but what's it actually pressing on? It's pressing on the rest of the environment, which is infinite. If it's pressing on an infinite environment, it's also getting infinite press back, infinite pushback, which means it's exactly the same. Whether it's got walls or not, and pushing an environment being pushed out against an infinite environment is going to get infinite pushback, and it's going to have exactly the same effect, a positive pressure environment.